We haven't talked about the Brian Flores case in a while, and for good reason, not much has been happening. It's an illustration of how slowly civil litigation can move through the court system. He filed on February 1 of 2022. Here we are, July 23 of 2024, and the case is still stuck at square one. What claims are going to be arbitrated? What claims aren't going to be arbitrated? There's an appeal pending now before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. We've talked about the Ninth Circuit recently. That's California. Second Circuit is New York and surrounding states. And what happened is, in a nutshell, when the trial court ruled on Brian Flores' case, some of his claims have to go to arbitration, the secret rigged kangaroo court of Roger Goodell. Some of the claims can be pursued in court. For example, the claim against the Broncos for wrongful failure to hire him, claim against the Giants for wrongful failure to hire him, claim against the Texans for failure to hire him after he had filed his lawsuit and also claims directly against the NFL. The only team that got out of this was the Dolphins because there was an arbitration clause in his agreement forcing him into the secret rig kangaroo court where good luck getting a fair shake. And even if you win, you're not going to win nearly as much as you would have won in the actual court system. Again, Terry McDonough, $3 million, probably would have been $60 million or more if it had been in an actual court system. So here's where it stands. The NFL is appealing the decision of the trial court judge to allow Brian Flores to escape arbitration. And one of the arguments, and we wrote about this yesterday, but it's important because finally, finally, a high-level federal court is looking at this question of whether the commissioner should be permitted to be the person who handles the arbitration. Across the country, big companies use arbitration clauses that involve a third party who handles the arbitration, the American Arbitration Association, and there are others. Now, some would say eh, those companies are still kind of biased because they get business from these companies, so they know where their bread's buttered. And if the American Arbitration Association isn't giving, insert name of major company, the kind of decisions it's looking for, they'll find some other arbitration company that will be the default. Regardless, regardless, it's less unfair than having the CEO of the company that wants all of its claims to go to arbitration be the one who resolves the case. That issue finally is being taken up. And a group of a dozen law professors who specialize in dispute resolution have issued a brief. It's called Amicus Curiae. It's friend of the court brief where they're saying, hey, even though we're not directly involved in this case, we think that this could be a mess for the administration of justice and specifically credibility of the arbitration process if you allow this to stand. Because the fear is if the NFL ultimately gets a pass to do this, Others are going to do the same thing. So that's the important issue that's pending. But I, I have become aware in the process of reviewing the briefs. And again, I, I mean, I've been, I've been reading way too much crap. Legal gobbledygook mumbo jumbo. I know how to kind of fast forward through it and get to the good stuff. I saw something, though, yesterday. And this is, well, this is a little surprising, but I guess it isn't. One of the arguments the NFL has made, Brian Flores, after he was fired by the Dolphins, ended up getting a job with the Steelers, which was admirable. At a time when Brian Flores makes himself into a pariah by suing Club Oligarch, the company that has 32 independent companies underneath it. It's a very small industry. He's taken on the NFL, the Dolphins, the Giants, and the Broncos right out of the gates, followed by the claim against the Texans. It's going to be frowned upon to give Brian Flores a job, but the Steelers did to their credit. And also to their credit, when it was time for Brian Flores to sign a contract that included an arbitration clause, the Steelers agreed that nothing in the new agreement would affect his pending lawsuit. Now, it wasn't in the agreement itself. It was an email that was sent by our good friend Omar Khan to Brian Flores' lawyers 
And the email, and this, this is publicly filed. This isn't anything secret or confidential. This employment agreement is not intended, Omar Khan writes, to infringe in any way on the lawsuit filed by Coach Flores in February 2022, which is currently pending. The club and Coach Flores do not intend for anything in this employment agreement to infringe upon his right to prosecute the pending lawsuit. Let me read that again. The club and Coach Flores do not intend for anything in this employment agreement to infringe upon his right to prosecute the pending lawsuit. And neither does this agreement infringe upon the rights of the NFL or any party to the lawsuit in asserting any defenses to the lawsuit. Lawsuit, not arbitration, lawsuit. Nothing infringes his ability to prosecute the pending lawsuit. One of the arguments the NFL has made in the Brian Flores case is that the arbitration clause in his contract with the Steelers requires him to arbitrate all of his claims, despite that email. I asked the Steelers for comment yesterday because I wasn't sure they even knew about it because they're not part of the case. The Steelers had no comment. I got to wonder what Omar Khan thinks. I got to wonder what Mike Tomlin thinks of the NFL defying the express terms, defying and ignoring the intent as articulated by Omar Khan that nothing in that contract would be used against Brian Flores' ability to prosecute his lawsuit as an argument that all of his claims should go to arbitration by virtue of the arbitration clause in that contract. I wonder what Art Rooney thinks. That's why I contacted the Steelers. It's like, you guys know what the NFL's doing with the promise you made to Brian Flores? Do you know they're ignoring that and they're making the argument that the Steelers contract is basically the silver bullet that sends everything to arbitration? Again, no comment from the Steelers. But my guess is Omar Khan, pissed. Mike Tomlin, very pissed. Art Rooney, I'd love to, I'd love to, and Art Rooney typically gives interviews to Steelers.com. I got a feeling, <laughs> I got, let me just predict, let me go out on a limb here and say, the next time he gives an exclusive interview to the website he owns and operates, the interviewer isn't going to say, so Art, let me get your thoughts on the NFL ignoring your wishes and using against Brian Flores the contract he signed with you to try to force his claims into arbitration. It's something. And there's another weird meandering way that this all came to light. Let me summarize. The NFL first made the argument by submitting a copy of the contract between Flores and the Steelers without proof that Roger Goodell approved the contract. The commissioner is required to sign off on every coaching contract at every level for every team, which, you know, we talked recently about antitrust violations hiding in plain sight. The idea that the league has to approve of every contract entered into between the 32 independent businesses and their employees, that's kind of an antitrust violation that's just kind of sitting there that nobody's ever going to do anything about. But because the agreement that was submitted by the league didn't show Roger Goodell's signature, the judge refused to even consider the argument. So then after the judge ruled, the NFL filed a motion for reconsideration saying, oh, look, we found, we found the signed copy. And the judge said, no, it's too late. It's too late for that. So what's happening now on appeal is the NFL is asking the appeals court to send the case back to the judge to require the judge to consider the arguments made by the NFL. And that's when the battle would be fully joined here that, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Steelers said nothing in this contract is going to be used against your ability to prosecute this lawsuit. And, and look, maybe there's a legal argument to be made that helps the NFL here. But look, I've, I've probably pissed off 345 Park Avenue as much as I ever have over the past few weeks. It's just basic right and wrong that we all learned or should have learned when we were kids. And I think we can all agree, people of reasonable mind, basic sense of good and bad, it's wrong to, to tell a guy that the club and the coach do not intend for anything in this employment agreement to infringe upon 
his right to prosecute his pending lawsuit and then to use that contract as the thing that would send the entirety of the pending lawsuit to arbitration. Again, why do you hate the NFL? I don't hate the NFL. I love the NFL. And I was indoctrinated by the voice of John Facenda. And I hold the NFL to the standard, to the pedestal on which the NFL perched itself to get a seven-year-old, eight-year-old kid like me fascinated by it in the early 1970s. And I expect to, to uh, see the people who are the stewards currently of the National Football League to act in accordance with that image that was projected by NFL films to lure me in and to get a lifetime of passion out of me and to get me to the point where I spend 90% of my life promoting their product. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.